confusion with a log. Hi right, guys. Well, it is a lovely moonlit, exciting Saturday night where maybe finally we will get some frost on our pumpkin, which we have not yet had at Bugs in a Jar Farm. Here on October 28th, could be frost on the pumpkin, and uh, so no surprise that on my final Saturday night at Bugs in a Jar Farm, I am sitting here alone with my little dog, talking to my imaginary friends, and uh, so it's not only my last Saturday night, it is my last night at Bugs in a Jar Farm. I'm 99% sure that the little dog and I will be heading out of here tomorrow, getting our thin-skinned asses to Florida. So I was just going to have some very simple straight-ahead doomer porn, short and sweet tonight, and I might come back and do a second quick rant, but I want to thank <clears throat> Lieutenant Aaron, who I will actually be joining up with in Florida here in about a week or so, uh, for sending me this article from Florida, this, I don't know if this is exactly hopium or not hopium, I usually think about in the future. You know, it's where these apocaloptimists are uh, who understand how doomed we are, but it's just going to work out anyway, are, are talking about how we're going to turn this freight train around. So, if I had read this article, you know, in the, in the 1970s or the 1980s, talking about sea turtles in Florida, how they were going to bring back the sea turtles in Florida <clears throat> through all of their little hopium suggestions, like, like dimming lights and, uh, and, and turtle exclusion devices and whatnot, and how they were going to bring sea turtles back uh, to nesting in Florida, I would have that would have been hopium, and, and, and I said, ain't gonna, and I would have said, ain't gonna happen. Uh, whenever I read an article about how they're bringing uh, species back from the brink of extinction. Well, here, regarding the sea turtles, at least in Florida, we have some, quote, good news. It's not hopium. Uh, the numbers are in. The Endangered Species Act, you know, which that, um, which that good steward of the planet, Richard Outhouse Nixon, uh, it was under the Nixon administration that we brought in the Endangered Species Act, and now we are celebrating another success story from the Endangered Species Act. They actually mention you know, comparing sea turtles to uh, bald eagles and alligators, uh, which I might try to remember. N no, sea turtles are not bald eagles or alligators because bald eagles and alligators do not nest on a tiny little strip of sand between the ocean and a paved highway that is getting ready to go underwater. But, but, but anyway, so uh, I don't know if this is hopium, but, it, but it's close enough. So it, it, it's kind of, they did, this is ABC News, celebrating the return of the sea turtles to Florida. And they do it entirely backwards. You know, how so much of this, uh, how hopium is usually delivered, you know, they'll pick a species that is, uh, in, instead of going up like sea turtles, is going down like, yeah, let's call it rhinos. Uh, you know, like they'll do this whole article uh, about how rhinos 
are getting ready to go the way of the dodo bird. That there's no way in hell uh, that rhinos are, are going to exist in the wild 50, absolute maximum 50 years from now. <clears throat> They're already functionally extinct. There will be no rhinos in the wild. and Everyone knows it. And they, and they do all of this doom and gloom about all the ways that rhinos are screwed. <clears throat> and then in the last couple of paragraphs, you know how it goes. But it's not too late. There is still a window of opportunity to save the rhinos and all of this hopium crap. Uh, comes out, but ABC News did it completely backwards, where they front loaded all of the hopium, and then I uh, finally got got to reality at the end. So I'm, 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 I'm. This is basically just a short and structural manual how how a doomer how a doomer reads good environmental news. Uh, and this actually is not the first time that I've read this story. I just haven't mentioned it because the story is unadulterated horseshit. Well, it's not unadulterated horseshit. Well, that's just, a, I, I'm not going to read the whole story because it just, it just repeats itself over and over and over again. Uh, number ABC News Number of sea turtle nests on Florida coasts exploding, even tripling in some regions, conservationists say. It has been a record year for the sea turtle nesting season in Florida. All right, we have some good news in the doomosphere as conservationists are finally seeing the fruits of their labor as the number of turtle nests increased exponentially across the Florida coast. Turtles are once again proving that slow and steady wins the race. Decades after initiating protections for the turtles that nest on Florida's southeast coast, the densest nesting region in the world, conservationists are now witnessing the fruits of their labor as the number of turtle nests increased exponentially all over the state. While the entire state is seeing a record number of sea turtle nests this season, the numbers have tripled since last year in Space Coast, Florida, a 72-mile span of beach on Florida's central east coast near Kennedy Space Center in Cape Canaveral. So far in 2023, Space Coast has recorded a whopping 20,545 loggerhead nests 31,893 green sea turtle nests, 61 leatherback nests, and three Kemp Ridley nests, with a total count of more than 52,500 nests. We're not talking individual baby sea turtles. We're talking in this 172-mile stretch of Florida, more than 52,500 nests, uh, according to the Space Coast Office of Tourism, I bet, and the Canaveral National Seashore. Uh, at one point over the summer, the region was seeing more than 300 nests pop up per night. Um, Green, green turtles have seen the largest increase out of the species that nest in Florida. Uh, the wildlife, the Archie Carr National Wildlife Refuge saw a 195% increase in green sea turtles, one of the most threatened species of turtles. Uh, and it, by, by July 21st, 
researchers had counted 13,683 green turtle nests at the preserve compared to 4,638 nests during the same time last year. Uh, when Henning began her career about 25 years ago, it was typical to see just 60 to 70 green turtle nests in one year, she said. Uh, in the 1980s, those numbers were even smaller <clears throat> with just 5 to 10 green turtle nests in one year. So 5 to 10 to 52,000. Uh, and of course, so why is this area, take a wild guess why it's so full of nesting sea turtles, because it contains 24 miles of unpopulated coast, meaning uh, on the entire east coast of Florida, there is this one little stretch of 24 miles that is a human exclusion zone, uh, and then, you know, a total of like 72 miles, which is all that's left. You could imagine what these numbers would look like if there were no humans. If there were 52,000 sea turtle nests and one 72-mile stretch of beach where there are none to very few humans just think, instead of 72 miles, if it was 400 miles, uh, how many sea turtle nests there would be uh, without humans. Uh, around the state, there have been 212,000 sea turtle nests recorded this year and the nesting season isn't even over yet. There you go. And last year, we saw 151,000, so we're talking 363,000 uh, sea turtle nests in the last two years. Uh, conservation efforts for sea turtles began in the 1980s following the passage of the Endangered Species uh, Act. The success story echoes that of the bald eagle and American alligators, other species on the brink of extinction that rebounded as a result of protections from the ESA. Turtles are very slow growing species and often don't return to nest on the beach where they were born until they are 25 to 30 years of age which is why the results of the conservation efforts are just now being seen. So anyway, good for the sea turtles. Uh, hallelujah. Now I've actually uh, been reading this story uh, over the past several weeks and just haven't bothered to uh, mention it because a a as I've been doing uh, every year since I became a doomer and, and I read any story, I, I see any positive news uh, uh, about sea turtles rebounding and I'm thinking there's two little problems with this story. Yeah, we're, we're all celebrating good for the sea turtles. Hallelujah. Good for the Endangered Species Act. Thank you, Richard Outhouse Nixon, uh, for doing that before you, uh, whatever happened to that man, can't quite remember. Uh, <laughs> but uh, there, there, there's two little problems. Actually, they're, they're, they're like elephants in the room that you read all of this crap about how sea turtles uh, ha have been brought back to extinction. The first, and they're both to do with climate change. The first, of course, is sea level rise. That 
sea turtles nest on a beach. They nest on beaches. Without beaches, the sea turtles have nowhere to dig to lay their eggs. And as seas rise, the first thing that is going to be uh, drowned by rising seas are going to be the sea turtle beaches. Now, maybe if I was a real apocalyptic, I would say, well, you know, with the rate of sea level rise, that as the as the water rises, the beaches just move inland. I don't even know if this is true. I'm just trying to be an apocalyptic. So even if the sea levels rise, okay, maybe the beaches. Are, are, are just going to start moving inland. There's a little problem in, in Florida and probably, oh, I'm, I'm guessing 90% of where uh, sea turtles nest, which is tropical and semi-tropical beaches, is that there is a paved highway. I think it's Highway A1A, or is it Plain Old Highway 1 uh, in, uh, in the east coast of Florida. A1A, even, and even if A1, A1A wasn't there, Highway 1 is, you know, right beside it. So what's going to happen is the beaches have nowhere to move. So if the water just comes up, good God, I mean, less than a foot. When sea levels in Florida rise, let's call it a foot, the water is going to be lapping up right up against uh, a, a, a paved highway. Uh, Aaron and I, in fact, saw this very thing down in the Florida Keys when we were down there a couple of years ago, that the beaches have already disappeared, and, and the water is, is, is six feet from the side of a paved highway. And, and, and this is going to be from Key West to Jacksonville, including this whole stretch here. Oh, what are they going to do? Are, are, are to, to make room for the sea turtles, are, are, are they going to rip up uh, Highway A1A uh, so the sea turtles can dig, can, can dig a damn hole? What happens when, uh, when they get to Highway 1 and, and then a few miles after that they're going to hit I-95? You know? Uh, there, there's going to reach a point, and it's not very far off, where the sea turtles are going to have no beach left to lay their eggs. And, 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 and you see the, the, the stories uh, with these clueless morons, these little greeny lefties, uh, cheering on that the sea turtles are saved. And now there is a second... Uh, elephant in the room with sea turtles and uh, which, which they've been talking about for years it, 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 as if the sea level rise wasn't enough to uh, kill the, the sea turtles. The other thing that is happening is that uh, more and more uh, baby sea turtles are being born female. Uh, because that's, I mean, I, mean I, I was hearing this when I was in Costa Rica like 30 years ago. Uh, the biologists were, were already seeing this in Costa Rica on, on the beaches there that as with climate change, as, as things heat up, that it is weird uh, what determines the 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 gender the sex of the baby turtle is how hot the sand is and after a certain temperature threshold in the sand uh, when the eggs 
reach a certain temperature threshold, it, it I guess it kills those something like it kills the Y chromosome or anyway, the, the bottom line is that after a certain temperature threshold, it is a very narrow band uh, that it triggers the embryo to develop into a female. This very, uh, and, and so as soon as, as the, the beaches, the sea turtle, nesting beaches reach this critical mass, 100% uh, of the, uh, the, the babies are female. Uh, so there's no boys. As far as I know, sea turtles are not, what's that word, parthenogenic. But anyway, so this article goes on and on and on and on, and nobody's going to get to the bottom of it. Uh, then, so here we are, at the, as I say, this is kind of a, a flip with the hope. It's after all of the hopium, they get to the doom at the very end. Uh... Let's see, quoting one of these guys, sea turtle scientist, uh, Dr. Long, uh, obviously we like to see higher numbers, but we have to remember that it's really the long-term trends that matter. Just because nest numbers are good right now, it does not mean we can relax or remove regulations, close quote, especially as climate change continues to threaten both the turtle's habitat and their ability to sustain a population in the future. Not only is sea level rise destroying the beaches where the turtles come to nest, the warming climate is causing a disproportionate proportionate number of females to be born since the gender of reptiles is determined by temperature. In many cases, some nests are producing 100% females, which will severely affect the species' ability to sustain healthy populations in the future, he said. It's scary. The results of climate change are very obvious in the sea turtle world. So what you were, uh, so they, so they end on an honest note. They, they, it's the, the flip of the Hollywood ending. So I guess good for ABC News, at least ending uh, w w with the doom. That, that sea turtles are clearly doomed. That this is, a, all of this celebrate, this well-deserved celebration uh, a, a, about all of the sea turtle nests, uh, you know, it, it's gonna last uh, what, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years max, a and uh, you're going to see uh, when there's no more beaches left, and the beaches that are left are just hatching uh, female turtles, what you're going to see is, uh, is the sea turtles doing this, and then they're going to go right down the other side. And you come back uh, in, in a few years, and the sea turtles are going to be more doomed than ever. Uh, you know, this is why every time I see an article on sea turtles uh, celebrating some good news about sea turtles, it, it, it's bullshit. It, it, it's unadulterated. Or, I mean, the, the facts and figures are good news. But uh, sea turtles are 
doomed. Kiss the sea turtles goodbye. Okay. I mean, show your little kids all those cute little baby sea turtles climbing out all those little girl sea turtles uh, climbing out of their uh, climbing out of their holes in the ground and uh, running off to get eaten by a seagull or whatever happens to 99.9% .9 of them. Anyway, that is how a doomer reads the news. You cannot compare a sea turtle to a bald eagle or an alligator, which are probably also doomed, but that's uh, a, a, another rant for another day. So anyway, now that uh, I've taught you how to, uh, to read environmental news, uh, we're going to go back to the standard format of how they usually do it, where they put all the doom first and then throw in the hopium uh, at the end. And this is just, I'm going to come back with the straight ahead doomer porn that I had regularly scheduled tonight. Back in one minute. Bye guys. Why is it so damn hard to find the off button?